to learn this today i'm by my soul because i want to talk about um, a topic that doesn't involve bubuccino how did i finance my study it was asked several times on this channel studies are quite expensive i know that and most of you wanted to know how did i pay for my degrees phd master courses and things like that so just to give you a little bit of intro i have a bachelor in biology then i have like my first two master courses in science the first one in um microbiology and a second master in environmental biology then i have a phd in biology related course i would say in natural sciences my bachelor in biology i did that at the university of namibia UNAM, and even though i'm a biologist today i call myself a biologist initially i wanted to do medicine so from high school i applied for medicine but back in the day it's still the case um kids from the village don't really speak good english and medicine have really high english requirement at the university so even though my science courses were all amazing with a's and a stars my english i had a d in english and because of that i couldn't make it to medicine and i ended up doing biology which for me was also a nice course because anybody who know me from high school i loved biology so much and i was always reading a biology textbook it was probably the easiest courses or the easiest course for me in all my uh, high school life that was really easy like i would study biology every single day except the days that i knew that we had just for other subjects and my least favorite subject was history uh, i i as soon as you know once I moved to grade 11, I had a choice not to take history and I was like out of that. I hated that. And it was also the, especially in grade 10, it was one of the subjects where I got least marks. So biology at UNAM, how did I finance that? In Namibia, we had what is called a student, what is it called? A student fund, I think from the government under the ministry, is part of the Ministry of Education. And most of the student who do not have uh, or whose parents cannot afford to pay university fees would apply for student loan. And I had a loan from the, this fund that usually it did cover tuition fees. It did also cover the hostel fees because I was in the hostel. My parents live at the north and I had no accommodation in Windhoek. I had to be in the hostel and all that was covered by the student loan then my parents supported me for the four years when i was doing my bachelor with pocket money so transport money when i needed to go for holiday money for food if i also needed to buy some books then that was contributed or money that i got from my parents and when i talk about my parents here not only my mother and my father also involved in africa families that, you know we have big families so basically also my uncles my aunties and my grandmothers, you know, everybody, the whole village come together to support to support you. Sometimes, you know, mother's friend would give you chicken, would give, I don't know, something, some food to take to the uni. All that is support that I got from my family and I appreciate that. So that's how I find my bachelor. Four years using a student loan and of course some money from my parents' pocket. During at the end of my bachelor, I knew that I wanted to do a master course right away and I applied for the master course in a, it was an environmental course. I think back in the day it used to be called master in biodiversity or something like that from the biology department. And I also applied for, for a scholarship through Taxen. I don't know if Taxen is still in Namibia. There was something called Taxen and they used to advertise for scholarships and what I applied was a, a scholarship um, or funding from a German scholarship, which was DAAD. I think the English version for this is German Academic Exchange Program, if I'm not mistaken. So I got that scholarship and I started my master course in 2008, right? No, 2009 at UNAM. I started my master course three weeks no three months after i started when i saw the total cost of what i supposed to pay was way more than um 
what the scholarship was giving me for tuition fees. You know, I just knew right there and then that my sister was already first year. You know, there's no way my parents would be able to help me. I decided to quit. Then I went home for, like I quit my master course and I went home for a full week until I found another solution, which was to cancel, just to leave this master course completely and join another master course that was a little bit cheaper and had extra funding. And therefore I changed from biodiversity and I went to do microbiology and the research part was already funded by another scholarship. So this was, I, I mean, I didn't have control over this situation, but at least it was a decision that I made based on the fact that I wasn't going to ask my parents to contribute more money after they have already, you know, they have been already paying for the past four years. And then my siblings were already like my sister was already in the uni. And then my other siblings were kind of already in high school. So second masters, no first master. It was already a little bit challenging. I have to leave the biodiversity master, join microbiology master, and that was funded. And two years, I was done with my first master course in, in microbiology at UNAM. And that was entirely funded by just scholarships. I had a DAAD was partially funding that. And then I had um, another scholarship. I don't remember anymore. I think it was from Zeri. Zeri is like a department at UNAM. And then um, the Zuri part, they did fund the research part, like, oh, you know, DNA extraction, PC analysis, PCR analysis, and all this was funded already by the Zuri project. Yeah, at the end of my master course, microbiology, I was just like thinking, I still love environmental biology, and I would definitely want to go back and study if I get an opportunity. So I wrote to DAAD if they would fund my second master to do something that I was really passionate about because that's what I wanted to do in the first place and I stopped it because they couldn't fund it. In Namibia it was more expensive and the solution was, okay, we would fund this master course but you have to do it in Germany because it was a little bit cheaper because here the universities are for free so they were paying a little bit more pocket money than what they gave me when i was in namibia but they didn't have to pay tuition fee and tuition fees in namibia was very expensive university fees in namibia are very expensive so daad funded my second master and that allowed me to do my you know master course in environmental biology like uh, this was called resource and environmental management something that i really really loved and i was you know after today i'm very very grateful that they gave me a second chance so that's how i did i funded my second master again you know after my bachelor course i was sure i would never again go back to study and still ask my parents you know my parents don't earn a lot of money and we are like four in the family and we have also extended family that they support so i was like Four years is enough. Now I have, if I want to do anything, I have to do it on my own. Also, I remember when I was doing my bachelor, I wanted to quit halfway and go to Russia because some students were already moving to Russia to do the medicine, medicine courses. But when I had that discussion with my parents, it was like, no, first finish what you have started since we have already contributed. And after you're done, we start working and you can do whatever you want to do when you are earning your own money. So I just have to finish first my bachelor and do whatever as long as it didn't involve them paying for it, it was okay. First master done, second master done, I was ready to go for PhD. And for sure, I wasn't gonna... At that stage, I was also sure like, if I'm not getting a scholarship to find my PhD, I'm going back to Namibia, work and then come back when I have money to fund it myself. But luckily when I did my master course, the project that I did, like the master thesis, at the institute where I did my master thesis, the project was nice and they wanted to, to actually help me also as a PhD candidate after my master courses. And I was like, fine, since they provided the fund, why should I say no? So for PhD was also funded by, what was it? Uh, it was an institute which is part of uh, Leibniz Association. Leibniz is like a research 
association or foundation in Germany. They did fund, they actually fund my PhD research and also pocket money was very nice. To be honest, I feel very lucky because I didn't have to pay for all my studies apart from the bachelor. Even the bachelor course, the loan, it is a loan, but I, if I didn't have an opportunity to get that loan, I would have not, my parents were not able, would have not been able to pay everything, like considering tuition fees, hostel fees or accommodation fees. I hope I've answered, addressed everything. I funded my scholarship or my studies through scholarships and student loans. I loved particularly the scholarship part because they were also giving pocket money. I didn't have to ask anything for my family. That was absolutely amazing and my parents had to concentrate on my younger siblings who were still going to uni. They are still, they, the youngest one are still going to the uni. But yeah, so bachelor I used alone, second, first master and second master scholarship and then um, for my PhD, I was also in a PhD. It's not a scholarship, but it's like a PhD program here in Germany. It's a um, very nice system where you're almost employed as a PhD candidate and they give you a working contract that is not 100% paid, but rather 65% or 70% paid and that is also very good because with that you also get to pay government pet tax and you're already considered as a as a normal worker when you're done with the lab experiment maybe your phd contract has already come to an end if you live in germany you have also a possibility to get something which is like uh, unemployment money because you have already been paying for tax for the past um four years i didn't have that because I decided to leave science immediately after or even a week before I graduated so I had already a working contract before I graduated or I defended my PhD and I didn't need that like I miss my PhD time because you have actually to be honest I feel like I had so many leave days that I didn't utilize because I was so focusing on finishing on time finishing on time but I'm now thinking now I have a full employment contract. Now I have really, really limited, limited holiday days. And back in the day, especially um, when I did my master course and when I did my PhD, I had more leave days. I should have used that because my contract, especially for the PhD, was only 65%. So I still have a lot of free time. PhD is very tough. You just want to focus on, I want to make sure that I finish on time. I think my fear was always like, if I don't finish on time, I might be sent home without my PhD and people, I mean, my parents would be very disappointed. Why did you spend four years in Germany doing nothing? And now you show up here without qualification. So I was working so hard to make sure that I got my PhD on time. Yeah, that was it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like to see more video where just me by myself and talk about this career related topic or work related topic, not beauty, I'm not really a beauty person but if you like that leave that in the comment or in the description below and if you enjoy this video as usual give me a like most important guys leave a comment and if you're new subscribe to a channel that was it from me today and bubuchino in the background ciao 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 no i think al has headsets on you cannot hear me yeah so ciao 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 ciao